Uh, in essence, you're saying that uh, a lot of things were neglected during the eight years of the Byrne administration. Not neglected. That would be, a, that would be unfair. I think it would be unfair to Brendan. Um, Brendan came along at a point in time, a major um, transition point in how government was structured. The power of the legislature, independent power of the legislature, raising its head, him having uh, to deal with that. Um, economic issues that were, uh, the income tax issue itself uh, was monumental. Brendan had an incredible insight into serious problems the state faced and was, had the intestinal fortitude to attack them. Whether it was the income tax, Pinelands, some really, really tough issues. Um, in doing that, you only have so much political capital. Uh, whether even if it's your own party uh, that you're involved in. And so he didn't have either the resources nor uh, the political capital that he was spending on very, very important issues uh, that have also shaped the future of the state. So it would be unfair to blame Brendan for that. That was a, a consequence of, I think, the periods of time that he faced. Looking back, do you have any disappointments about things that you wished could have been done during Burns' terms? There were, there were things left at the end. Uh, I wouldn't say disappointments, but, but we just didn't finish. You know, we didn't get to, which is always going to be the case. But I, I was trying to call attention to the problems in the pension funds and trying to do something about that. Um, to, to the extent that we had a, a plan, which I don't remember what it was, to change the pension funds. And I had been meeting with Fred Hipp at NJEA, who wasn't enamored of the plan, but he wasn't hostile to it either. Um, and I, I foresaw this as a, a coming problem for the state, which is, it is now in spades. Um, so, But we didn't deal with it. Uh, I wanted to centralize all the money collection into the tax division because um, I, you know, you, you pay money to the Secretary of State for something, and that check wouldn't get deposited for two months, and we had the equipment to do it. And, and I also thought there were some real efficiencies possible between all the work we were doing with corporations in the tax division, the Secretary of State was dealing with corporations, and the, the labor and industry was dealing with corporations. And somehow all that could have been melded into one more efficient. Same thing with senior citizen. You know, every, everybody was dealing with senior citizens with their income eligibility for, for Medicaid and this and, and all these different programs getting into state parks. And, <laughs> and we had the information about senior citizens, we could have centralized all that and made sure everyone got what they were entitled to in all the programs. And, and I mean, so there were lots of things that were on the drawing board that didn't get done before we left. But, uh, uh, the, and, the, and the, the major disappointment I have is with the school finance reform stuff because I still think it made sense the way we did it and it was the right way to do it. And I don't, I didn't follow, I didn't have time to follow it afterward to find out what people thought went wrong with it and why from the end of our administration in 1982, early 82, until Florio was governor, which is like 10 years later, nothing happened in the courts but then all of a sudden the whole thing <laughs> was scrapped. Flora had a completely new plan. That was scrapped. There was another new plan and now we have a plan that just uh, on the face of it doesn't make any sense that only 31 districts are entitled to equal protection uh, or, or, or quality, thorough and efficient education compared to 500 plus districts. And I think people are, are now starting to figure out there needs to be a better, newer formula. When they do that, I think our formula is the right formula in some fashion. And I, I, don't, I just don't understand. How, would, how, how, does your form, how, did, how did your formula differ from 31 average school well, districts? We, I mean, the basic thing of ours was called power equalization. And we got it from school reformers at the time. It wasn't our invention. They were, they were promoting it nationally. It meant 
uh, that every district in the state, if they taxed at like one dollar, would raise the same amount of total dollars for education because if Teaneck taxed at a dollar and raised a thousand dollars and Newark taxed at a dollar and raised three hundred dollars, the state would pay seven hundred dollars. And so, so it was power, power equalization. That gave every district the same benefit based on the standard of community wealth, property wealth, to, to run their schools um, without fiscal constraints. But, and so as a matter of equity, it just makes sense mathematically. Well, unless there are other issues you want to talk, I, wa I wanted to bring you back to the politics after the passage of well, the income tax. Yeah, th look, I, I think that that something terribly important has changed since you and I served in government, and that is that uh, people in elected office have turned into careerists, and I think this has happened at uh, many, uh, in many cases at the local level, certainly at the state level, and, and very, very fundamentally at the, f at the federal level. Because uh, remember, I've, I've been able to work at all three levels of government. And uh, the change in Washington is even more extreme than the change in state government is more extreme than the change in local government. But um, I think we are now being disserved by a class of elected officials that are in it for the job and in it for the money. Um, and I think we were fortunate enough in, in our period in government to work with a legislature that there might have been a few guys that were in it for the money and a couple that were undoubtedly corrupt, but most of them were not in it for the money or any, even in it for what the next step could be. They were in it to serve, to serve the public and because they enjoyed it. Um, and I think that that's what made it possible for uh, Wayne Dumont to step outside his normal party comfort zone. Uh, I think it's what made uh, uh, both Wiley and Burstein able somehow to find the time and the energy to devote to, to the issue of uh, school funding reform and, uh, and school reform itself. Uh, and, and what makes it difficult or impossible for most of the current crop to do that. Um, we've really, this is, this is a, a, a tectonic change, I think. Uh, and um, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, I think it explains a lot about why we were able to accomplish as much as we were able to accomplish despite incredibly difficult fiscal economic circumstances and why this crowd this current crowd, uh, whatever the party, ha hasn't been able to accomplish anything like what we were able to, despite incredibly uh, uh, good economic and fiscal times. Uh, that's that's my thesis, at least. You know.